Hey guys, Abel here. So a few days ago, I thought of rewatching Jewel on the Garage, which was released like almost two decades ago. But while searching on Netflix, I came across Jewel on Origins, which I actually forgot about it. I remember watching the trailer like earlier this year and it seems interesting. And to my surprise, some of my friends told me that it wasn't good. So I binged the whole series by myself, it's just 6 episodes and I beg to differ but I thought it was actually a pretty solid horror movie but just not what you would expect from the Drew On franchise. In other words, those who think it's a trash movie uh, know you. <laughs> and you know, over the years, Drew On franchise has not really shine really brightly. It has gotten worse with its entry and particularly Sadako vs uh, Kayako I believe. That movie was absolute trash. Anyway, I'm gonna tell you what I like about this new uh, Origins series and here we go. So Drew On Origins is sort of like a TV drama series but it's just 6 episodes and immediately from the very beginning you can tell that the style, it looked very different from modern horror movies because the movie setting was set in the late 1980s and to present that era, they kind of presented a different type of cinematography. There's a lot of handheld movement when you are following the character. It almost feels like a documentary, that kind of sense. It's also interesting to see how they made this miniseries as expanded to several years. I would say it's like within 5 or 7 years. Your own origins really focuses on the character development instead of trying to be scary. Yeah, there are some scary scenes, which I'll get to that later. But the characters in this miniseries, you can really feel for them. Like you have this uh, schoolgirl who got raped, you just feel really bad for her. And there's also a curious writer who writes on ghost stories and he's just so intrigued by this curse and he keeps wanting to find out where the house is. These are the two most prominent characters in the miniseries in my opinion. There are other characters and you know, they may have a small role somewhere else but they contribute to the series quite well I would say. As a miniseries carrying the name Ju on, I think a lot of people would expect hardcore scary scenes. Actually in this miniseries there aren't a lot of scary scenes which I think a lot of people expected. But the concept of less is more is used a lot here and I think it was used very well because as I said, this miniseries focuses a lot on the characters instead of just trying to be scary. I don't recall any jump scares in this miniseries and I'm glad that skip that is an annoying tactic to just get you scared. There are a lot of gory scenes, very bloody, like oh my goodness. <laughs> and most of these horrifying scenes in this miniseries they are mostly committed by the human characters themselves instead of Kayako. Which brings me to my next point of the theme of this miniseries. I really believe the writers and the directors, their intention is to show that the humans are the real monsters instead of this supernatural curse that's happening concurrently in the series. So the one that I can think on top of my head that shares a similar theme showing the humans as the real monsters is The Mist. And this is a story written by Stephen King as all you know he is the king of horrors. Here's a fun easter egg that I found online. So throughout the series you will see that these characters they will walk past some TV news happening but how some victims were found in a trash site, kids being killed. Those news are actually real and not only that, the crimes committed by the characters are actually based on real life, it happened before. But perhaps the most disturbing crime that was committed based on real life is that a pregnant woman got killed and not only did she got killed but her tummy got sliced open and a telephone also was tucked inside based on real life guys. Of course this series is not without faults, there are some stuff that I find unsatisfactory. So there's one death scene in the last episode and I thought where the character just simply disappears. It was really lame, like I 
they could have come up with a better way for him to die. Another plot hole that most people would think is the uh, simultaneous time travel thing that happened in the house. How the past interacted with the current scene and yeah it probably doesn't make sense but then again the house is cursed so and last but not least for some reason not everyone who entered the cursed house uh died by the curse some of them still live and i'm not so sure why it was never explained because in the joan franchise anyone who entered the house dies dies horribly i might add but then again I guess it adds to the mystery of the series and yeah, why not? So what is your favorite horror movie? Let me know down in the comments below. Stay tuned for more reviews. I'm Abel, signing out.